All right, and welcome to the last lecture in uh, um, Mathematics 2, right? So today's lecture is going to be about second order linear differential equations. So um, first of all, let me um, introduce the, the concept. So what is, um, we're going to begin with a homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients, right? So uh, generally speaking, um, a second order differential equation looks like this. So general second order differential equation looks like this, right? So, it, uh, so you, you have some uh, some expression, some function of essentially uh, four variables. And uh, as these variables, you substitute like y double prime, y prime, y, and the invent variable x. And um, it, it, it is going to, to, to be equal to zero, right? So the, the, this is a generic, uh, uh, second order differential equation. Now, a linear um, second order differential equation is um, a second order differential equation that is linear in y double prime, y prime, and y. It does not have to be linear in x. So a linear differential equation looks like this. Some function of x times y double prime plus uh, some function, some other function of x times y prime plus uh, yet another function of x, say c of x times y, and um, equals, well, some expression in, in x, I don't know, whatever, f, capital of x. Right, so this is a linear differential equation. This is a the, the most general form of a uh, second order linear differential equation. Now, uh, a little bit of terminology. So uh, if a, B, and, and C are actually constants, I just like numbers A, B, and C, then uh, we say that the coefficients are constant coefficients, right? So, uh, constant coefficients. And if the right-hand side of my differential equation is zero, then, then we say that the differential equation is homogeneous. Right, so these two conditions are kind of independent. So you could have a differential equation that has constant coefficients, but is not homogeneous, right? So it could be something like, I don't know, three y double prime minus 25y plus seven y negative y prime equals some expression in x, like, I don't know, cosine x times e to the minus x. So in this case, the, the, the coefficients are constant, but uh, the differential equation is not homogeneous, right? And you, you, you can imagine something like, I don't know, uh, y double prime plus x times y equals zero. And in this case, the coefficient are not constant, but the differential equation is homogeneous. Okay, so um, it turns out that it is convenient to arrange terms uh, in this order, like something times y prime plus some, some, something else times y Sorry, something times y double prime plus uh, something times y prime plus something else times y equals whatever. If it's zero, then we have a homogeneous differential equation. If it is not zero, uh, then we have a non homogeneous differential equation. So here are some examples, right? Uh, so these are uh, linear differential equations, second order uh, with constant coefficients and homogeneous. And these two are non-linear. So notice that they are not linear because in example six, we have y prime times y, and that's a non-linear pattern. And in example seven, we have y squared. So again, that's not a linear pattern. All right, um, second order differential equations are really very, very common in uh, physics. And the most important uh, the reason for that is Newton's uh, second law of motion that tells you that um, if you have um, a body of mass m, right, and you say x of t is its coordinate, uh, that depends on t, so m is the mass, right, so then uh, the acceleration of the body, so which is the second derivative of the coordinate, times the mass equals the force. Basically, uh, sorry, uh, 
the force here usually depends on the position of the our body so it's something like f of x t and sometimes it also depends on uh, uh, on the uh, velocity of, of the body right and because of that we have this uh, second order differential equation uh, that can just comes ready from uh, Newton's second law of motion anyway um, so one of such example is Hooke's law, right? And uh, that yields a simple harmonic motion. It looks like this. So uh, let me first introduce. So if you have uh, an axis, due to some reason, it is denoted by X, although it is kind of a vertical axis, but, and you have a, like a spring here and a mass attached to, to the spring and basically what you do is you kind of pull it and then it starts vibrating uh let me show you maybe um, a little animation right so here is a spring basically what you do you you have some uh, some weight here and then the spring starts 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 vibrating well and if we assume that uh there is no energy dissipation right so everything happens in vacuum um, and uh, in that case if the, there is no friction if the, there is no air and so on and so forth in that case the such motions is just, just going to go on forever clearly and uh, basically uh, the differential equation that that governs it is just uh, it comes from Hooke's law Right, so it tells us that, uh, well, but basically that, that's just, just it, so it's just, just uh, Hooke's law. Well, uh, according to Hooke's law, the uh, force acting on, on the weight is uh, proportional to the displacement, right, so it is the right-hand side, and according to Newton's second law of motion, it is m times the uh, acceleration. So basically this is how it works now uh of course in, in real life uh there is going to be some so-called damping so it's not going to go on forever so in real life oscillations are going to, to to decrease in magnitude due to some energy dissipation of the friction so let me try to uh well i don't know can i catch it, catch it? yeah so if we have a really huge amplitude and then if we know increase damping then it's going to basically uh, oscillate for a while and then it's going to essentially stop okay uh, so the, usually it is assumed that the damping force is proportional to the velocity um, right and it is of course uh, its sign uh, positive and negative uh, is such that uh, it acts you know against the acceleration so in the opposite direction right so that, that's how we get the, this, this differential equation okay so this is kind of uh, one of two simple situations where um, a linear homogeneous differential equation um, appears in in real life so a vibrating spring um, and well basically if there is an external force then uh, the right hand side is not zero but it is rather t yeah uh, by, by the way maybe I should, should mention it again that in all of these differential equations so we assume that uh, our unknown function is x and it is a function of t right so it is a bit unusual probably that the dependent variable is in fact x but the independent variable is t I, I don't know why but yeah so that is how they decided to denote it Okay, so another um, possible application is electric circuits. Um, so here we have a circuit with a resistor, inductor, and a capacitor, and we have some, some force. And uh, well, a long story short, basically the, the idea is, is the, the same, right? So the uh, rate of change of um, uh, of the charge is uh, is the current, right? And then uh, we can compute the voltage drops across the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. And uh, according to Kirchhoff's uh, voltage laws, 
uh, the sum of these voltage drops is going to be equal to the supplied voltage. And basically we have the, essentially the same um, differential equation. All right, uh, now uh, with second order differential equations, the situation is somewhat, well, we already saw uh, some scenarios where we can uh, uh, transform a second order differential equation to a first order differential equation, right? So except for these scenarios, uh, sometimes it is possible to solve uh, a linear second order differential equation now, we are only going to see one such scenario, namely when uh, coefficients of the differential equation are constant, right? So in today's lecture, in the end of the lecture, we will be able to solve the differential equation of the form a y level prime plus b y prime plus c y equals uh, some function of x, right? But with a linear differential equation, the first step is to solve the same homogeneous equation, right? And once we are able to solve the homogeneous equation, I will show you how using that solution of the homogeneous equation, how we can uh, solve the corresponding non-homogeneous equation. Okay, so that's the end of the first part.